everyone feels man coming at you. As mentioned in our previous video, we'll be taking a look at one of the samples in this week's video, specifically around VRTK and a bow and arrow sample that's included with VR render streaming. As you might know, the bow and arrow is probably one of the most popular videos that we've had on the channel. And so I think it kind of makes sense to revisit it and show you one, how you can get this really quickly and easily set up with VR render streaming. Two, how you can get this integrated with Oculus. And three, just kind of roughly how this all works together with VRTK. If you do have questions, let me know down either in the comments or you can head over to our normally formed Discord where we're talking about pretty much anything VR, but also specifically around VR render streaming. One thing I would love to know down in the comments below is what are some of those samples that you might like to see, whether that's integrated with VRTK, whether that's outside of VRTK, what would be something that you think might be very helpful in terms of leveraging VR streaming? I'd love to know those down in the comments below, but otherwise, let's go ahead and get started. As we started with last time, head over to the GitHub page for Fuse VR VR render streaming, and we'll scroll down again to the setup here. If you're starting with a fresh Unity project, you'll then want to go ahead, head over to the package manager, and then make sure you import in that Fuse VR VR render streaming. You can see I've already done that, but otherwise you would just go ahead, click the plus icon and then click add package from Git URL. Once the package is loaded, you can then see both the samples that are available. We'll be specifically looking at the VRTK integration sample and you just simply click import into your project, which will start that import process. You'll then see that here within your assets folder. So we can go ahead, close down the package manager and then let's go ahead, open the folder, head over to scenes and then click on the sample scene. When you first import in the sample, you might get a bunch of errors that are happening, and that's because you'll need to go ahead and import in three specific Tilia packages. So the first one being the tracked alias, second one being interactables, and the third one being the snap zones. So each of these is used within the context of this sample, and as a result is required for that to be imported in. Simply head over to VRTK Tilia to go ahead and grab the links for each of these specific packages. And then also make sure that you add Tilia to your scoped registries. That can be done pretty simply by heading over to the project settings, heading to the package manager, and then adding in these parameters for VRTK Tilia. Once that opens up, let's go ahead, click play, and you can just kind of quickly start testing this out. This is integrated with VR render streaming. so. As you can see here, the camera rig has already been set up accordingly and integrated with VRTK. Quite simply, all this is is just a very simple bow and arrow, and then you can go ahead and shoot down any of these cubes that's floating in space. Now, just like last time, let's head over to our render streaming services area, click on render streaming, verify that you have the correct URL, and then if you're not like me, who is running on my recording laptop, as a AMD chip, you'll also just want to disable the hardware encoder support just for testing purposes. Then let's go ahead, click play. So once you've hit play, head over to fusevr.com slash rendering, click connect to cloud streaming. And there you should go ahead and see that your streaming is coming in successfully here. If you have a VR headset hooked up, you could of course always enter virtual reality mode, but in this case here, this is more than enough for us to confirm that it's working and just kind of quickly test and start iterating from here. Okay, great. So that kind of illustrates that we can get the streaming part working, but what if you say want to tweak this for some other type of headset? So VRTK is again, really flexible in that regard and allows us to pretty seamlessly bring in say the Oculus SDK in here. For our specific purposes, we'll be going in and getting the Tilia package for Oculus, but there's a quick prerequisite in that you need to go to the Asset Store and grab the Oculus SDK. Heading into the Asset Store, you can find the Oculus integration. Go ahead and download if you haven't already or otherwise import it. Once Oculus is finished importing in, let's head over to the Package Manager, and then we'll also want to add in the VRTK package for the Oculus SDK. You can head that by scrolling all the way down to the SDK settings and then grabbing the link for VRTK Oculus integrations. 
if you already have the VRTK package working with this sample, then you don't actually need to do any of the package manager setup. Simply just head over to add package from git URL and then paste in the link, which will automatically start pulling this from the NPM package that we hooked up previously. Once you have the VRTK Oculus package in, head down into your packages section, then search for Tilia's Oculus SDK, runtime, prefabs, and there should be your camera rig. Let's go ahead, drag that into the scene here. You can see I've set both of the uh, camera rigs to be at 000. But once we have that set up, most of this is already pre-hooked together with the linked alias. So all you really need to do here is swap out these aliases. And then for our specific purposes, we have interactors that are listening in for specific trigger events. So if we head into the aliases and look for both of these interactors here, you'll see that we have grab actions that are associated with them. Those are very specific, of course, to our input that comes from the actual camera rig itself. So in the context of VR render streaming, there is input that is tied to each of these actions on given buttons from each of these different uh, inputs that get streamed in. But in our case, we want to swap that out for the Oculus integration if you're interested in using Oculus. You'll actually want to go ahead and drag in the input specific to this whatever button you would want to use. Here, there are button prefabs that we can go ahead and drag in. For simplicity's sake here, I've put in two buttons, one for the left hand, one for the right hand. Let's go ahead and mark this one as left touch and it's not active. And then the button that we want to use in our case, let's just go ahead and put it as the index. So similarly here, let's go ahead, drag in index. These are going to represent our buttons. And then we just need to assign each of them accordingly. So left to left and then right to right. And that's it to get this sample working with the bow and arrow. So now if I go ahead and let's just disable the streaming here and then click play. I have my Oculus Rift here set up just for some quick testing. But you can already see from the game view that this is working accordingly with the Oculus SDK, which is great. And then let me go ahead and grab my hands, which you can see here. Go ahead, grab this. Go ahead, grab that. And just like that, you can see we're now shooting. As you might have seen as I was running the demo, the way it works is very simply. Go ahead, grab with each of these index fingers. And then when you go ahead and grab by pulling your hand back behind your head, that will go ahead and trigger creating another arrow that gets spun up. This is all done through the interactors that we've gone ahead and set up. And those interactors come from the interactables package. But yeah, otherwise I think fairly straightforward to get this all hooked up together, whether this is with render streaming, whether this is with Oculus, VRTK makes this pretty straightforward if, as long as you have the SDKs integrated seamlessly to actually make that happen. So that's how you can get VRTK working with a bow and arrow, at least in my implementation. Again, as I mentioned at the top of the video, I'd love to know what are some other samples or use cases you'd love to see for VR render streaming. What are some other things you'd like to learn about the topic? There's just so much to go on into this whole area and it's just really, really exciting in that aspect. Thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Confused, man.